Good morning, uh, precious fountain of truth. As you can imagine, um, I am uh, overwhelmed with emotion and memories this, this morning. All this week, um, I've been reminiscing about the beginning of, of this phase of Fountain of Truth, and uh, it's been a very emotional week for me. But I want to thank Pastor Patrick and Sister Judy and everybody that, that it did this, create, this awesome program, the songs, everything, Mark, the team, everybody. Thank you for, for putting this for us. It means so much. And um, I was a 26-year-old girl that came here with three little kids, two, three, and four. And it was a Sunday, exactly like today, the last Sunday in July, hot. And uh, there was no air conditioning in the little building, just fans. And I remember that I was sitting in the front with my three little kids. And I thought, oh my goodness, what is about to happen here? And Sam and I put our heads down and worked without stopping because we both love what we do. And, um, and our kids helped us along like good little soldiers. I, I, I remember I was telling Ben that the, we used to have a little house next door to the, to the little church. And my first Sunday there, I went into the kitchen because they used to sell comida. How many of you remember that comida? And so I went in there, and there was a group of ladies working, and I popped in, and I said, Paz de Cristo. You know, I didn't know anybody. Paz de Cristo. And there's a, a beautiful sister who came out and said, mm, in Spanish. She goes, I hope you know how to cook, because right here we like to. If you like to eat, you have to cook. And you're the pastor's wife now, so you better know how to do it. And I'm like thinking, oh, my God. And I was afraid of that woman for five years. <laughs> but the thing is, is that, you know, we tackled it the best we could, leaning on God's hands. We went, Sam and I had just been married five years. So it, it was just so much, but you know what? Through it all. And we were not afraid. And through everything, God has been so good to us, despite the cancers and despite the travels. Despite everything, the hand of God has never left us. And for 35 years, for 35 years, we have held on tightly to his hand. And I said, I, and I would tell the Lord, I cannot let go because if I let go, I don't know where I would go. But we have held on and to God's hands and to each other's hands and to my kids' hands. Everything has changed in this last year um, where we all, my family, worship together. Well, now uh, Tim is in San Diego and Sammy went moved to Phoenix. So it's just, thank God I have my Missy, my Leons here. But everything has changed. And um, I ask you for prayers for them. They're still fulfilling the call and the mission. But nothing, and we've been through a lot, has been as tough as Hunt. Hunt, <coughs> Hunt's journey has shaken us to the core. But we're still hanging on. We have seen the hand of God in every step of the way. Like Paul said to John, I am happy when my children are serving the Lord. I love you, Fountain of Truth, so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good morning, everybody, and praise God. Uh, 
I was reading 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse, verses 18 through 29 today, and it ends saying, if anyone's going to glory, let them glory in the Lord, because it's all about God and his strength. I want to thank him so much because of his mercy, his grace, his, um, his forgiveness, his covering for us all of these years. You start out as a young man and, you know, I was going to come to Fontana and uh, in 20 minutes I was going to clean up all the demons and in, in one week I was going to have 5,000 people, you know. And then you learn that it doesn't happen that way. And so uh, thanks to him for all of the strength. And Rachel came in, Rachel and I came in here and we just dove, we just dove in to the point of, of neglecting our own children. Um, I was telling Ben this morning as we drove home from prayer that, um, you know, we never went to, to uh, school activities, open houses. And if we did, it was 20 minutes and hurry, hurry, go to church because they were always on a Wednesday night. I should have just changed the service to Thursdays. But, you know, and, and uh, traveling and I remember one day we told him we're going to go to the beach or to the park today and we're going to have a barbecue. And just as we were loading up the car, I got a call from some terrible thing that happened with some of the members of the church. So I remember we, we sat him down and said, stay right here. We'll be back in one hour. In one hour, we'll be back. And uh, that was about 8.30 in the morning. 8 o'clock at night, we come back after going through hospitals and jails and police reports and all the things that happened. And I remember that they were sitting right where we left them. I don't know if they ate that day. You know, Sammy was old enough to make a peanut butter jelly sandwich. And Missy came. I said, what happened to our barbecue? And there was a lot of what happened to our barbecue days with them. But they're, they're all right. And, you know, we have to send them to the psychiatrist once in a while. But they're, they're going to be all fine. I remember moments... Uh, Back at the at the Slover Avenue Church, um, just I remember when we were putting in a septic tank, and I didn't know how to do that. And the guy on the phone told me, "Okay, it's got to be graded one fourth of an inch every five feet. So when we set down the tank, the pipe goes into the hole, and I only set it down once. If I have to pick it up again, I have to charge you a hundred dollars every time, every time." And he says, "Do you have it ready?" I said, "Yeah." But I didn't know. There was a picture of me in a hole. You saw that? That was me. They came down and they set that septic tank. And he said, perfect. Whoever did this is perfect. I did it that morning not knowing anything. So God even works in septic tanks. My goodness. Just things of that nature. So many things. But I, I want to thank my wife. Two bouts of cancer. And so many things that we've been through, and we've been through them together. It's been a wonderful time, and we want to hear the word of God this morning. You know, I, they kept it from me, who was going to be the speaker, uh, but I have a leaker in the, in the team. He always leaks to me. And, and I have a leaker, and I said, who is speaking? And they say, he says, we got Brother Limones. I said, no way. And he said, way. I said, Brother Limones, and I want you to know, um, he is like, uh, no, he's not like me. To me, he is the number one Hispanic, Jesus name, apostolic preacher in the world. And that might even extend more to Hispanic. And I'm serious. I'm serious. Church, if you think I'm crazy, he is ten times more active than I am and he just flew in from Mexico to San Francisco and he flew out this morning here and you, you're, you're in for a treat this morning and I want to thank you so much brother he just went through cancer himself in January had his vocal cords operated and he's here when the doctor told him that you're never going to speak again here is preaching twice today here and I appreciate Brother, so much you coming. I know what it is to miss a Sunday, and, and, and you travel all over the world. I have two or three million miles. You must have about six or seven on American Airlines. They already know us there. Thank you, church, for being a great church. 
Thank you for being obedient. Thank you for walking with us. Thank you for putting up with me all these years, my, my crazy jokes, um, you know, every, everything that happens. Thank you so much. I want to thank my sisters. Some of them are here. I saw Maggie, and I don't know if there's another. Lydia, are you here? Maybe they're coming to the Spanish service, the other ones. My 96-year-old mom will be here in the Spanish service. That's going to be a lot of fun, too. Um, what can I say in two minutes, 35 years, just thank the Lord, thank my wife, Thank my children. Tim, I'm so proud of you in San Diego. God's going to do great things. Um, um, we're hurting because Sammy and, uh, well, Sammy and Celeste, we're hurting for them a little bit. But the grandkids, that really hurts a lot. But we know that God's going to do something great. I want to thank Patrick. I want to thank everybody. We love you. We love you. We love you. Thank you very much. You're in for a treat this morning. So get your, get your worship on because we're going to have church today. God bless you and thank you very much. Come on, can we give them just a, can we really, really honor our, our pastor and first lady? We have something special for you today. Real briefly, um, would you mind bringing on out? We want to give you a few little tokens of uh, appreciation and just share the love with you. And uh, Sister Rachel, we have just a little something for you that is uh, just a little something for you. And then um, Pastor Sam... On behalf of Fountain of Truth, we wanted to uh, present you with this plaque. And the plaque reads like this. In appreciation for 35 years of hard work and dedicated service, thank you for being a godly example of what a man, a husband, father, pastor, and leader looks like. I think I say this for everybody in the house today and all over the world. We love you. Found a Truth Church, Rancho Cucamonga, July 2019. Happy 35 years. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for the many, 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 many years of service and sacrifices. And um, we can't thank you enough. And we just want to honor you with this plaque today as a small token. And our, as my wife says it best, our dearest first lady, in appreciation for 35 years, standing by the side of your husband, sometimes in front, leading, for your hard work and dedicated service, thank you for being a godly example of what a woman, a godly woman, a wife, a mother, a first lady, and leader looks like we love you as well the same found a true church rancho cucamonga july 2019 god bless you we want to present this to you as well can we give it up And at this time, we have a very special guest, and I want to invite Pastor Reynaldo Leal. Pastor Reynaldo Leal is the pastor of Iglesia de Jesus Cristo in the city of Bell Gardens, California. And he's going to be with us today to say a very special prayer over our uh, senior pastor and first lady. So at this time, would you be so kind and uh, receive Pastor Reynaldo Leal with a warm Fountain of Truth welcome. I feel highly honored to be here uh, this morning. It's not every day that um, a pastor and his wife celebrate 35 years of uh, being pastors. I would say that more than half of my church members don't even have 35 years. And this beautiful couple already have 35 years in the ministry. I think we could give them a big round of applause. Uh, I'd like to please, you know, if you can excuse me if I get a little bit emotional. It's probably been about two years that I got to meet uh, Pastor Valverde and then his uh, uh, wife, uh, First Lady, and my wife that is here. As soon as 
she met you, sister. She said, we, we have to invite her to come to the women's conference. And uh, since that time, we've been having lunch, coffee. We get together once in a while. And uh, when I was invited here, I said, wow, what a, what a, what a honor do I have to be here? And uh, pastor, sister, when I thought about this morning, you know, I was last night and I was saying, God, I want you to give me a, a word for them when I uh, lead, them, lead them prayer. And there's two words, and I, I, I wrote them down that uh, overstood on my mind. And it's the influence and legacy of a man of God. Influence and legacy. And I'm sorry if I say something in Spanish. I'm more fluent when it comes to biblical language and Spanish. La influencia y legado, two words. Influence. Influence. We live in a world that it's influenced by many things. Sadly, most of those people that influence the world are not for the better. But in this 35 years, pastor, sister, you have influenced so many people. I'm one of them <laughs> that you have blessed. Your influence, your work, the things that you have done here and done throughout uh, the 35 years have influenced so many people. Just this uh, week when I was here, there was a pastor that told me that he heard you speak and he was ready to give up. He was ready to throw in the towel. But when he heard you speak, you just fed him life. And that is so beautiful to know that, you know, this great man of God, you know, he's, he's been such an influence. But also, legado, legacy. This is what, what we leave. Because we're all just going through this life. And a lot of people, sadly, when, when their life is over, they can turn back and there's, they haven't left nothing but probably sorrow and pain. But our pastor here, his wife, han dejado un legado, están dejando un legado, un legado en sus hijos, un legado en sus nietos, a legacy in their children, first of all, and their grandchildren. So when they're gone, their legacy will live, will live on. Come on, somebody's got to praise God. Come on, come on, church. And let me just finish with this. The, the great apostle Paul, when he was around 60, 65, when he was captured in Jerusalem, the Roman soldiers were taking him into custody, and he was in the steps of the temple. And he asked for a favor. He said, can I, can I, can I speak to the crowd? And this is the importance of influence and legacy. This man was 65 years old. And he, he said, okay, well, go ahead. And Acts uh, 22, 3, it says that uh, Paul, first of all, spoke to them in their Hebrew language, in the Jewish language. So the people that were shouting and kill him, and they, they, they quiet down. But there was another influence, very important, when he, when he opened his mouth. First of all, he said he was Jewish. He was raised in Jerusalem. But then he mentioned a, a, a name. <laughs> a name. And, and this was a name of a great teacher. In Spanish, it's Gamaliel. I was asking my children, what, how, how do you pronounce it in English? Ish. And it's uh, Gamaliel. And when the people heard that name, Gamaliel, they knew that this man 
was influenced by this great teacher. We don't know if uh, Gamaliel was still alive, for sure. But when the crowd heard about this man of God named Gamaliel, his influence, his legacy was so important that it made him just have peace and listen because the name of influence and legacy was being named there. Pastor, I don't think you grasp, you know, how important you've been to so many people. Sister, to you guys get to heaven. And God, they will show you the lives of many people that have been touched by your ministry. And I'm here, my family, part of my family is here just to say, thank you. <laughs> thank you for the great work that you have done for the glory of God. Thank you, your children your, your, that have been through so much. Sister, thank you. They've been through cancer and all this, but you, you have stood up. And you have showed us that we can do it. As, as, as wives of uh, men of God, you go through so much, but you have stood up and said, it's possible. With Jesus' help, it is possible. We can go through the trials, tribulations in life and say, Jesus, it is my strength. Come on, somebody's got to just praise God. <laughs> Hermanos, muchas gracias por recibirnos. Can you stand up, please? Vamos a inclinar nuestro rostro. Let us bow our heads. And let us declare that the Bible says that the latter glory will be bigger than the past glory. Let us declare that this man of God, this woman of God, that our Jesus has still many places where they're going to go and many people that are going to be touched by their ministry. Let us just bless them and bless their family and bless everybody that works to do the great work of God. Father, we come before you. We just want to thank you for 35 years. Father, it hasn't been easy. But as they stand here, they're a testimony of your grace of your mercy and of your power. And I feel honored as a pastor and as a friend of Pastor Valverde to lead this prayer. But Father, we join, we join each other in prayer just to bless him and to declare, to declare that greater things are ahead of, of them, that many victories will still come and your great name will be known throughout the world through the work they do they do in the precious name of Jesus Christ amen thank you <laughs>